What is up with on object in Power BI here at the beginning of 2024? I'm Allison Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and we're going to get into it. I'm going to show you what on object is looking like right now. We're going to talk through what's going on with it. Where is it going? It's going to be in preview features indefinitely. Spoiler alert. I don't know. As far as I know, it's going to be in preview features for a little bit longer at least, but I think you should switch over. So uh, we're going to go over it. We're going to jump right into Power BI. We're going to see how you can set on object up, how you can essentially go back to the old view, but also use on object at the same time. So if you have been holding out, if you maybe have been on an older version of Power BI that didn't have it and you just updated it and you now are able to switch over to on object, well, Let's get into it. I'm going to show you what you need to do, where everything's at, just so you can get used to using on object. Because even if it's not getting rolled out for a while, I would suggest using it. I personally like it better. Once you adapt, I think you will too. So I am over here in Power BI and I have my on object set up. So some changes you will see when you have on object set up, if this is your first time switching it over, is you are going to see these visuals showing up over here on your home ribbon right up at the top of your page. But you will also be able to see all of these panes over to the side. Now look over here all the way to the right side. I have like this whole kind of collection of panes that I can switch between. I'm gonna show you how you can set that up. Now, first off to set up on object, if you do not have it set up, is to go into your preview features. So file, options and settings and options. So file options and setting options that takes you to, of course, all of those settings, you're going to go ahead and go on down to your preview features, right there halfway down the page, and you're going to turn on on object interaction. Now you don't need to have any of these other ones on I like to test out all of the preview features. Not a fan of Power BI Home and Desktop though, that one's off. But we can see I've got a lot of the other ones turned on. Again, not necessary for on object to work. You just wanna make sure you have this one turned on. When you hit okay, you will be prompted to restart. Now you can just close out the report you're on, open it back up, and you are going to have the on object switched over. Now, in addition to, of course, having your visuals up here, instead of just natively showing up on a visualization pane on the right side in your report view, they're also really nicely organized when you click into this dropdown. Because here in the dropdown, you're gonna be able to see all bar and column charts, line and area, waterfall, funnel, scatter. They're all so nicely sorted. It makes it super easy to find what you need instead of just like looking at that giant block of visuals every single time. You're also able to go to App Source to download custom visuals by going to get more visuals right here or importing it if you already have that saved to your device. You can natively start with a new visual right by just clicking that plus sign. And then you're able to bring over your data right from here. You can see we've got some options to remove to turn on spotlight. We've got our filtering up at the top. Until we put data in, we would not get any design options. But you could just click new visual, bring your data in. And when you do that, Power BI kind of decides the visual for you, which we can see that one's just set right now to a stacked column chart. But we could bring our data in and adjust it, of course. All right, I'm gonna delete this one. And let's talk about our panes over here. So I, of course, have my data pane, right? We always see our data pane, whatever view we're in. But I am easily able to switch over and bring over any of these other panes. And let's talk about that. So when on object first came out, right, we were only able to have essentially one pane, whatever one we were on, that's the one that showed up, right? If I clicked over here, I would be seeing my visuals here instead of stack next to it. This two stack setup, this is really much that old style, right? Well, towards the end of the 2023, a lot of the feedback was, hey, like, I want to see at least two things at once. I don't want to always just be swapping one pane. I want to be able to see a few things together. So at the end of last year, at the end of 2023, we were given the ability to now stack our panes. So I love this option. I think that this really has any of the haters to on object. This really solves 
the main gripe of, you know, being everything stacked like that. So now with the visuals here, I can easily bring my data over to the different sections. I love the suggest a type feature. If you're unsure of what visual you're on, all you have to do again is add that data in and it will automatically suggest a visual for you. We also have, of course, our formatting pane. So now our visual pane and our formatting pane, instead of being kind of folded into one that you would flip through, is two separate ones. So you can see the visual you're on, the data, and then you can go into the formatting for the visual that you're on. So sometimes I like to have both of these up at the same time just to see, oh, what data do I have? How do I have that set up? And easily be able to navigate through those options. We can also see our bookmarks. We can see our sync slicers, really all of your different panes. We can see that are available to us in our view ribbon. If you want them, you can put them over here. You're also able to get them off of here, right? If I don't have a lot of slicers on mine, this is taking my entire screen, right? I can't even see my report having all of these things open. So if you no longer would like one of these panes to show up, you can either hit collapse, which will then just obviously close that, or if you want to fully just knock it out, get it out of here, then you can hit close. Um, and then you can also decide if you want to always show that here in what is called the pain switcher. So if I'm like, you know what, I don't really care about having my selection one unless I have bookmarks up, I can decide I want to hate, I don't want to always show that in here. And then also I want to close it and that is going to knock that out. I can see that it's deselected up here in my panes. And then I could do the same thing for any of them. Again, with like, if I want to get sync slicers off of like, I have slicers, maybe I'll look at this, maybe I won't. I could just close that to move that off of the view. It would still keep that here in my pane switcher, but it would just fully remove it here so it wouldn't be folded up. And then of course, anything you're not using, you could just collapse in as well to get to what you want to do. Now to update these features, to add things into it, if you're like, wait, mine doesn't really show that I don't have those abilities, like I can only flip flop between one. Well, you can go over to your customized pane switcher and this gives you a lot of abilities that you can control right here in this plus sign at the kind of bottom of all of the different panes. So I can decide um, natively, hey, do I want data, format, bookmarks? I get this whole, all the options right here. Essentially, I'm seeing and can easily add through to bring those in. Another spot that you're able to check is your settings for your pane switcher. So this gear icon right at the bottom of the pane switcher, when you click on that, that is going to also pop up that settings pane, you know, your file options, options and settings brings it up, but we have a little new tab here, this report settings. So here in report settings, we've got a lot of options. Play around with this to get it looking exactly how you want it functioning, how you need it to. So in your visual guidelines, you can decide if you want to display those smart guides. So if visuals are aligned, you can decide if you want to have that visual type suggestion on by default, if you want in the build a visual menu to show those visualization types, control that, right? Show the data you need. Um, so you have what you need easily accessible, but not so much that it's annoying to filter through. You can always turn on that improved narrator support if you would like that. You could decide alignment to either be at the center or the top. And then here in your format pane, this allows you to expand all subcategories by default when you open a category. Personally, I have this on because nothing frustrates me more than not knowing where something is in a subcategory and having to open every single tab to find it because odds are it's going to be on the last one I click. So for me personally, I don't want to have to do a lot of clicks. I would just be able to scroll and easily see that. So I have mine turned on. And then of course we have our pane switcher section down here which we can decide, do we want to show the pane switcher? Um, always show the build a visual menu in the pane switcher and always open up a new pane. This one right here is key. That last thing that will, instead of it swapping places and only showing one pane right here, right? Where no matter what you click, it's all going to just be in that one pane. By having open a new pane, that's what shows that stacking ability to put them next to each other.
So again, you can get to that by just going file options and settings or even easier, just click that gear icon at the bottom and it will take you right to this page in your options. And of course, preview features is where we're currently living to turn on our on object interactions for now. And as far as I know, as far as I heard, I don't have any magic information, but as far as I know, this is going to be around for a while um, in preview features. So I would still say, hey, play around with it, turn it over. I know some of that big feedback was really just people not liking that the panes would kind of just swap to one instead of stacking. So now that they've added that ability, say go for it, switch it over, turn it on, play around with it so you can see that. The other great thing with on object, kind of actually to its name, is that your edit options are available on the object. I like this because whatever one I'm on, I can easily go to the object and then go modify, change things. I can see what is available to me based on the visual that I'm on. And then I can go and then depending what I have, that will give me kind of the panes over to the right immediately popped out to change different elements. So I just have cards and slicers on here for this. Um, but you can see what you're able to bring into it. And then of course your more options brings you over to add additional information on that data. So on object, I believe is here to stay, even though it's hanging out in preview features for the foreseeable future. If you haven't switched over, I would say give it a try. Turn it on in your preview features, play around with the pane switcher settings to get it functioning, how it works for you. And I think at the end of the day, you're going to be happy that you changed it. So leave a comment below if you use on object, if you have it turned on or your favorite part of it is, or if you're a holdout, what are you not liking? What are you feeling with that? Um, let us know in the comments below. Of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you'll see all of the other new videos that we come out with here on the Pragmatic Works channel as soon as they drop.